In this video, we're going to talk about the element of color. Color is one of the most important elements that any artist can use, no matter what medium they're working in, because it can actually destroy a project as fast as it makes it look good. So let's look at some basic information, some basic color theory. Um, first off, we need to understand what color is. And color is simply light being reflected off or absorbed by an object. That's a scientific as well as artistic definition. So in the example here, you have white light shining down on a yellow object. What your eye is actually perceiving when you're looking at the yellow object at the bottom is you're seeing all of that white light being absorbed except for that frequency of yellow. And so you end up seeing yellow. When we look at a white object, since all of the colors are being shown down on the white object, and from science class you should know that white, is, white light is all of the colors, um, that white object is actually reflecting all of the color back at you, so your eye interprets as, that as yellow. Lastly, when you're looking at a black object, that white light is shining down again. It hits a black object, but this time all of the colors are actually being absorbed by that black object. We need a way to organize the color so that we can make smarter choices. The color wheel is one of those things that we use to organize our colors, and it is simply the spectrum bent into a circle. Ironically, the color wheel was actually not invented or devised by an artist. It was actually devised by Sir Isaac Newton. So there's your Trivial Pursuit knowledge for the day. One of the other groupings that we need to talk about before we go on to color schemes are the primary, secondary, and intermediate colors. And it's important to know these because this is the basis for all the colors you would need to be able to mix. So we start with primary colors, and they're called primaries because nothing else can make them, but all the other colors on the color wheel come from these three colors. So you have yellow, red, and blue, and you guys have seen that since you were in elementary school. Secondary colors are colors that are made by mixing two primaries together. So we have three primaries, we have three secondaries. So you have yellow and red making orange, you have red and blue making violet, and you have blue and yellow making green. The third level of colors that we're going to talk about are the intermediates. And the intermediate colors are simply mixing a primary with a secondary that's right beside it. Uh, so starting at the top there, you, to the left, you have yellow-orange, which is a mixture of yellow and orange. Uh, you have red, orange, which is the next color, so on and so forth around the color wheel. If you can't afford to buy all of the colors in Michaels when you go to get paint, you can actually buy the three primary colors plus white and black and get all of these colors that you would ever need to use. When you guys are making your element samples, you will actually have to do all of the colors up through intermediate colors. So all that organization gives us a way of taking co colors and grouping them together. So we call those color schemes, and we're basically just grouping colors into categories to create moods, feelings, or to help unify a piece. All of the color schemes that we're going to talk about use all of the colors in the scheme and the tints, tones, and shades, or adding white and black. That's the same thing as tints, tones, and shades. So we need to start off, the first grouping of colors we can talk about are neutral colors, and these are colors that go with any color scheme. So that includes white and black, and when you mix those, you get gray, and then it includes all of the browns, because technically to make a brown, all you have to do is mix two, pro, uh, two complementary colors together, or all three of the primaries, and you get a neutralized brown. <clears throat> Again, those colors go with all of the color schemes and any of the colors. So we're going to start by choosing a single color, and we call that a monochromatic color scheme. Mono meaning one. Uh, and we add white and black uh, to create tints, tones, and then shades of a color. So tints adding white to a color, so we take our red in the middle there, and we add white and get pink. Uh, and we add black to a color, and that starts to look more like a maroon or a, a crimson red. Uh, if you add gray to a color, that's what creates a tone. And again, because white, black, and gray are all neutrals, it still works because it's that single color plus white and black. In my opinion, this is actually one of the most powerful color schemes because it is the most limited of the color schemes and can really help to make your piece pop. 
Now we're going to add in two colors, and these are called complementary colors, uh, and these are colors that are opposite from each other in the color wheel. So when you look at the color wheel here, and I split it out, yellow and violet are across from each other, red and green, blue and orange, so on and so forth. The top three pairs that are there are actually the most popular um, that are used by a lot of different people, a lot of different designers. You see them in sports teams, you see them uh, in Christmas and Easter. Um, so they're a very popular color scheme and this is a way to create contrast so it makes your object uh, or your, your subject look uh, a little bit more striking that way. Analogous colors are going to add three to five colors now and these are colors that are right beside each other on the color wheel. So when I rip this color wheel down you can see that each of the colors in the row sort of they have a um, color that's right beside it mixed in with it. Um, so you end up having sort of a neutralized um, color scheme where stuff isn't really going to stick out. It's going to look like everything's sort of blending together. A warm color scheme uses half of the color wheel and in this case on my color wheel here it's going to be the top half. These are colors that give off a warm impression um, and will have a majority of warm colors in it. It may end up having some cool colors um, but it will mostly have these warm colors and it gives you the idea of being someplace warm. It's an easy way to think about it. The last color scheme we're going to talk about is cool color scheme and these are the other half of the color wheel and these are colors that give you a cool impression or cold impression. Again a cool color scheme is going to have a majority of cool colors in it. It may have a couple warm colors in it but the majority of the piece should be cool. One last note on warm and cool colors if you have an object that you want to be in the foreground or appear to be in the foreground, you would use warm colors in the foreground and cool colors in the background because warm colors tend to look like they're coming towards you, cool colors look like they're going back.